Hello and welcome back to Joe Schaefer Flyfishing.com. I'm Joe Schaefer. Next up in my Schaefer Fly series is Ella's Beast. And just like Lady's Mysis is named after my older daughter, Delaney Schaefer, um, this one's named after my youngest daughter, Ella Schaefer. My wife hates this name for this fly. But I used to call Ella my little beast, and so that's how this fly name came about. Ella's Beast is a simple streamer pattern that I use in a lot of different applications. I use it in still water, I've caught bass on it, pike, um, walleye, bluegill, just about anything swimming in water will eat this. It's a good crossover fly. It can act like a leech pattern, or it can also act like a small minnow imitation or bait fish imitation. The nice thing about this fly is it's real simple to tie. Just like a lot of my patterns. This one's real simple. You can run it under a nymph rig, underneath an indicator. You can pull it as a streamer. You can do a bunch of different things with this fly. and That's why I like this fly so much. It's been one of my biggest producers after uh, over the last couple years. And really honed this sucker in and uh, enjoy using this pattern a lot so to start out with we'll start with our tying thread which is an olive brown 70 UTC real simple to work with I love these tying threads these 70s because they're real easy <clears throat> first we're gonna attach this with a little bit of jam knot we're gonna build a little bit taper up at the front of this fly and we're gonna make sure that bead stays in place you can also put if you want them a little heavier you can add a little bit of um, uh, the lead wire to this or non lead wire to make a little bit of the taper yourself I tend to just use the tungsten beads this is an orange tungsten bead on this hook uh, 5263s is typically the hooks that I use on these good strong wire hook. Um, they seem not to bend and or break at all, so that's kind of my favorite hook for this. Uh, TMC makes those. Um, you can get comparable ones, but that's typically the hook I like to use. Um, and as far as beads on this, I have them in all different kinds. You can use uh, tungsten olive bead, tungsten gold bead. Um, without a bead and just do some lead wire wraps under here um, many many different options for this fly I typically tie them in all the different kinds because I want to have them for every application that I use them for but this one just shows you a little egg sucking leech or a bait fish taking an egg pattern so we're just gonna build that taper there a little bit at the front of the head and then we're gonna continue our thread to the back of the hook here with connecting wraps and once we get to just before the bend here do a couple extra wraps cut off that excess and we'll start with our feather material and that's going to be just an olive brown marabou feather without the purple in there olive brown marabou feather and what I'll do is, is I'll just pull those fibers back as far as possible get the main part of the tail there and I measure it up to about the length of the hook shank. This is a size 10 uh, hook here. I'll tie them all the way down to size 14 and as big as size 4 even. So you can really adjust the sizes to fit the area that you're fishing. I'm going to lock that down with a couple turns for the tail. And then I'm going to move forward with wrapping that feather all the way forward here reason being is that'll help build up the body a little bit and um, get your regular taper in there and also you won't have to do as many turns with your thread to build up that body a little bit so we'll lock that down in place we're going to come in and cut that feather make sure you don't cut your thread there that's always a hard spot sometimes you can cut your thread there if you're not locking your turns down tight enough so now I'm just going to cover up a lot of that feather just go back 
and work my thread through with connecting wraps. Again, this doesn't have to be perfect. You're going to cover all this up anyway. You just want to get it on there. Make sure it's locked down tight. Right in there. And a few times I may do a couple extra turns. Those hairs are really sticking out. So we'll get all the way to the back of the fly there. And we'll start with our next material, which is uh, dyed UV polar chenille olive brown. The marabou feather is olive brown. Everything's olive brown in this. Found This is my first version of this that I tied, and I found that this just color combination just works perfectly. When you pull this out of the package, I like to give it a little tug. You kind of pull at the rope section of this and kind of tug it and pull it a little bit and that separates those fibers out a little bit. And we're going to come to the end of this here and we're going to just tie this in. And what I'll do is chop off these end feather, uh, these end uh, little pieces of flash and things like that. And that's where I'll tie it in at. Just making sure that I get that good and bind it down. You don't want that backing out on you. If you fish these things a lot, um, sometimes if you don't do enough wraps in there, it'll kind of splay out back there. Or it'll separate and it'll come undone, but never really had that problem. So just make sure you tie it in good. And usually I'll just kind of come forward, make sure I bind it into the whole fly. That'll be good. And you just lay that along the side. Next up is the dubbing. And I use uh, Scud Dub All Brown from Orvis. Um, really good product. It's a little bit tougher to work with as a dubbing. But it also makes a great little body. And you can do this one of two ways. You can come in and pull some off the package. Wet those fingers up a little bit. And bind it down. And this takes a little coaxing. It's it's pretty thick stuff, so you want to make sure it's bind down so when you turn it on. So you can also do it this way where you're just turning it on there. And I don't get real technical with this. I just kind of lay it in there. Sometimes that'll splay out. And I'll just turn it against the thread again. Put it in there. A little bit easier way to do this is make a dubbing loop which you can also do here. And I can make a little dubby loop, tie it in, come in with my dubby loop tool. And thing is with using a dubby loop tool, you gotta be using it a little bit work with it i'll probably do a video on demonstrating on how to use these things so watch for that what i'll do is just take some of that material lift up on that dubbing tool a little bit and i'll just slide those fibers right in to my dubbing loop there give it a couple spins Kind of turn it into a rope there. You want to make sure you're not catching anything else in there when you're spinning this. Okay. Get that uh, thread to the back of the head there. And then you can just turn it in. And you see that's another way that you could... Uh, put the W in it. it makes it a little bit easier and those don't worry about those fibers sticking out or anything like that that's all good stuff the more movement in this fly the more fiber sticking out the better I think on this fly we're just gonna bind that in we'll cut off our little W loop here and the dubbing portion is ready to go so there's two different ways that you can do that. Now coming forward, we're just gonna polymer this material forward 
just being careful to tease out those fibers on every turn. We don't want a lot of that laying down. And sometimes if you're going along and twisting that up, you miss those fibers. So just make sure you splay them out and catch all those coming out. You don't want them laying down too much. Takes away from the fly a little bit. Then I'm going to bind that down with some wraps over the top right behind the bead. Then I'm going to come in there and trim out the excess. So what I'll do next here is push all those fibers back and I'll just make a few turns back there just to make sure um, I'm getting those down and folded back. And I got a good place to lay down my thread wraps. I'm going to come in here with my whip finishing tool and do several turns here once. I want to make sure that this is locked in. So I'm going to do it a couple times. And there's Ella's Beast. Pretty simple. And now that looks pretty, it looks like a beast, doesn't it? That thing really looks hideous right there. But the trick to this is, is when this sucker gets wet. So we're going to wet this up and I'll show you what it looks like wet. We're going to wet this down a little bit so I can show you here. So now when this guy gets wet, it can look like a bait fish imitation or it can look like a leech pattern. Real good crossover fly really easy to tie and lots of movement in there with all these fibers these fibers when you stop it they'll splay out and then when you're pulling it they kind of lay back again I'll use these under indicators even so this is a great fly uh, Ella's Beast is another fly in my series very popular with the bigger fish they love this pattern Thanks for watching my series Schaefer's Flies. Take care and I hope you enjoy.